Hi, everybody. Good to have you join us today. Thanks for jumping in for these encouraging words together. Just a moment where we can sit down and share from God's Word and be encouraged together. You know, there's something wonderful, I think, uh, about knowing we're not alone, but knowing that we're brothers and sisters in Christ, that we're made one with the Lord through faith by His grace, and this gives us a tremendous opportunity every day to gather and give Him honor and to receive from Him the strength that we need for every day. Our verses today were selected by uh, Friendship Village Chesterfield's associate chaplain, Mary Myrink. Mary, you don't see much in independent living. We've designated her full time for service in our care center and in our new assisted living building. And she's doing a great job working hard over there. Once a week, she submits uh, one of our scriptures uh, for, for me to present in this moment. And today she selected Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Listen to what the Word of God has to say. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of the area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into the field. It's a very famous and powerful portion of scripture, and there's so much packed into just those few verses. I love how Matthew reminds us about the mission and purpose of Jesus, that he traveled through all the area towns that he taught in the synagogues, that he preached the good news about the kingdom of God everywhere he went, and he healed all manner of sickness and disease. And it tells us why he did those things. It's because of the compassion that was in his heart. He said he saw the people as sheep who had gone astray. I don't know about you, but I once met a sheep farmer. He was part of our, uh, our church, the church that I served many years ago. One of the things that I learned about visiting his, uh, his home and his farm and seeing those sheep was just how skittish they were. I couldn't believe it as I came up to where those sheep were, and they all began to run and scatter. They were easily frightened. And it kind of serves as a metaphor about the issues in life that come up that often leave us questioning, leave us scattered. Jesus cares about that. He cares about our concerns. He cares about our needs. And just as he poured out compassion on the people then, he's pouring out his compassion as well now. He's doing it in much the same way, by making his presence known, by moving in among us through his word, teaching us, directing us, leading us, and by coming and ministering very personally to the problems and situations of our lives, whether they be sickness and illness or something else. The fact is, Jesus cares. And that same compassion with which he ministers to us, he pours into us that we might care for somebody else. See, it doesn't take someone who's officially a minister or a chaplain or a deacon or who holds some title in a church situation to be involved in the ministry of service and care. That's something that's meant for all of us as the Lord's compassion fills our heart. Who is it today that's on your heart? Even as we pray to the Lord and invite him to meet our needs, let's also take a moment to intercede on behalf of someone else who's maybe going through a tough time today. Who do you know that needs the comfort of God? Who needs the strength of God? Who needs the encouragement of the Lord? Through our prayers, we all can make a difference. And as we pray, God may drop someone in your heart to maybe give a call, write a letter to, send an email, do, do uh, something of kindness that we might reach out and show care in a tangible way. With all of those thoughts in mind, let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we read the scripture today, we are thankful for the ministry of Jesus, the encouragement and life that came, Lord, through your ministry as you touch crowd in town after town after town. 
We thank you, Lord, for the compassion that you had on the people that you met then. And Lord, we thank you for the compassion that you are pouring out to each person even now. We look to you today for strength, for hope, for healing, in all that we need. But beyond that, Lord, we ask that you would fill our hearts with your compassion, that we all might together touch someone else that's in need and help them know that they're not alone. Help them to know that they're greatly loved by us and by you. Thank you, Lord, for how you make yourself known through your people. Be glorified in all we say and do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Be encouraged today. The Lord's with you. He loves you. He has nothing but compassion toward you. And the same compassion he pours out to us, he wants to pour through us to someone else. Thanks for joining us today. Here at Friendship Village, we're doing our best to show you these videos brand new at 4.30. They repeat at 8 o'clock at night and then once again at 8 o'clock in the morning. You can always find them day or night on YouTube. Simply type in Encouraging Words with Burt Campbell and you'll see lots of videos there right now. God bless you today. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time.